What's up guys, my name is Max and today we are going to be installing a 4 inch rough country lift as well as a few other parts uh, onto the K5 Blazer. We'll finally have a working lifted suspension and we can finally take the thing off roading. Super excited, this is kind of the last major hurdle uh, to getting this bad boy you know, really back on the road. Um, so I'm excited to take you guys through. So I'm going to kind of go through everything that's here. I have everything unboxed on the table behind me. Um, and we'll just kind of quickly talk about what everything is, why it's part of the kit, and uh, kind of go from there. Okay, so starting from this end of the table, we have two leaf spring packs. These are the front leaf spring packs. Um, as you can see, they're marked with a plus on one end. The plus uh, goes to the rear shackle, I believe, because it's smaller, slightly smaller. We have new bushings for... Um, these leaf packs, the front leaf packs are totally dead, so I'm guessing we're probably gonna get a little bit more than four inches out of this. Next item is we have these, these are the lift blocks, this is for the rear. It's the most basic thing, we're basically keeping the stock rear leaf springs and spacing the axle down from them. The kit comes with two sets of U-bolts, a longer set for the rear and a slightly shorter set for the front. Um, this is a Pittman uh, steering drop bar that we need to replace the factory one with. Um, it comes with an assortment of bushings. These are for the shocks, I believe, um, because it comes with four brand new uh, N3 premium shock absorbers, um, two for the front, two for the rear. The rear ones require new mounts, which is what's in those bags. In addition, that's kind of what comes in the um, standard four inch lift kit from Rough Country. In addition to that, I bought a couple of things. Um, this is a new steering stabilizer. Uh, it was like 40 bucks. It's also from Rough Country. Um, and I bought brand new stainless extended front brake lines and a rear brake line. And anytime you're doing a lift kit, the factory lines aren't going to be long enough. So unless it's a pavement princess, you really need to get longer lines. Um, the kit comes with like a relocation bracket, but I really don't trust that. I'd rather have new stainless steel lines replace the old uh, rubber garbage. Um, the other thing that we bought was this. This is, um, these are the mounts for the sway bar. These are polyurethane mounts. And uh, this bag is um, a sway bar disconnect. So this truck has a factory front sway bar disconnecting it. will buy you about 100 points on an R RTI ramp. Um, basically the way this works is this gets bolted to the... Um, axle and then it uses these quick connect pins through here through a bushing to disconnect um, this is important for two reasons the first is obviously gives you much better flex off-road the second is if you have the factory um, sway bar you're gonna need to buy a spacer kit or make a spacer kit that drops it about two inches down for a four inch lift um, because otherwise it's gonna put a lot of stress on the sway bar because it's all kind of misaligned this takes care of that problem and of course gives us you know better off-road ability pull over at the trailhead pull the pins uh move the sway bar up out of the way there's a bracket in here that helps you relocate the sway bar and basically secure it when it's um not in use also comes with polyurethane bushings um these products are from off-road design um stephen watson is the man when it comes to square bodies um any of you guys that have watched uh, Motor Trend or, or um, some of the other big YouTube channels, uh, you'll know who he is. Uh, he is the master of all things square body. Um, and this kit is about a hundred bucks. Uh, so let's talk about money. This kit is about a hundred bucks. Um, the spacers from Rough Country would have been around 50 bucks. So this is only $50 more expensive and it's considerably, considerable upgrade. Um, the kit itself, the base kit, so not including the steering stabilizer and the brake lines, I believe is like 470 bucks. Um, the steering stabilizer is like 40 and the lines are about 100 or $110 each. So all in all, we've got about 700 bucks-ish sitting on the table and this is basically everything that you need. Um, these Rough Country shocks are pretty beefy. Um, they're a reasonably cheap shock, I would say, based on... Um, you know just the cost of the kit but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're bad um they've got a, a nice big body and I, I guarantee you they're better than the wasted garbage that's on there um that's kind of everything that's included a rough country says the installation takes between six and eight hours hopefully it doesn't take that long um 
I think six hours at the absolute most with one person should be should be as long as it takes. Um, but I'm hoping to have it done, you know, over the course of a couple of weekends, probably about five, five to six hours total. Um, so that's what's in the kit. That's what we're going to do. comes with an excellent set of instructions. Um, there are a few minor, uh, minor corrections we're going to make to those instructions, but uh, they're pretty well written. Um, so at this point, there's nothing really left to do other than to get the truck up in the air. Uh, basically, the way you want to do this is you want the suspension free floating. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick up the truck by the uh, axle with a jack, and then we're going to put jack stands underneath the frame, allowing the axle to droop out all the way. That'll give us the opportunity to manipulate the axle and get the new leaf springs in and stuff like that. Um, this kit reuses all of the hardware uh, from the truck, but they provide new bushings for pretty much everything. Um, so you don't need to go out and buy any new bushings. The only thing you might need is the uh, new Pitman arm. Mine looks to be in okay shape, so I'm just going to roll with it. If I need to replace it later, it's not a big deal to uh, do it as kind of a standalone item. So, enough talking. Let's get to wrench. So, first step was get this thing jacked up. It's sitting up on jack stands. It's pretty stable. Got the wheels chalked. And first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the um, wheel off. I'm going to take the wheel off on the other side real quick. There's a, at least my studs are, are 19 millimeter. Um, the majority of the work is going to happen in here. We're going to replace this uh, steering arm right here. This is our leaf spring that we're going to replace. That's our shock we're going to replace. And this is our brake line that we're going to replace. Um, surprisingly, these bump stops are actually still in pretty good shape. Um, we may find we need some progressive ones later on. Um, and of course, this is our steering stabilizer that we're going to replace. Next step is to remove the shocks on either end. Um, it's going to be a three quarter or 19 millimeter. And then once you undo these nuts and this nut, these bolts come out. You just have to punch them out with a, uh, a mallet. So there's our shock out. Uh, make sure you hang on to all your hardware because you need it for mounting stuff later. This shock is totally wasted. So next thing is we got to remove the steering arm. There's these three 7 8 nuts that have to come out. Um, I loosened them with the breaker bar, took them off with the impact. Then 15 16 castle nut right here on this link. Um, I don't think I have one, so we're going to use the universal. Um, and basically just remove it. might take a few taps. That'll disconnect your steering, and then you can remove that arm. So, you see the ball joints out. Um, I just gave it a few taps with my pickle fork. It popped out. If you live up north, yours might not. There's a number of different ways of, of getting these things out. They all suck, and they all take time. I got real lucky here. What I don't know if I'm going to get lucky on is removing this arm. These washers in here that you can see are actually conical. And so getting them out can be quite a chore. Thankfully, we don't need to reuse that arm, so we can destroy it if we need to. So here are our three cups finally out. This is by far the hardest part of this install. Um, you'll see people cursing this thing all over the internet. Here is my two cents. This is a mostly rust-free truck from the south, so this should have been real straightforward. It took me almost an hour. So let me show you the tricks I use. First of all, soak everything in PB Blaster. I should have done this days ago. I'm an idiot for not doing it earlier. Two, hit it with a torch. Heat this area through here and this area through here. That'll help the cups grow a little bit. You'll see them move a little bit out of there. And then I spent a bunch of time trying to hit them with a hammer, which was the wrong approach. Don't hit the cups. Hit this area from the side, this area down, and this area from the side. And eventually they'll rise up a little bit more. And when that happens, what you do is you take a thin screwdriver or a very thin chisel, and you drive it vertically down this area. It'll spread the cup a little bit wider. And then I simply use the pair of vice grips to remove it. I spent an hour fucking around. I damaged those cups a little bit. If I had just done that from the beginning, it would have popped right out. Um, so to recap, PB Blaster, a couple of days in advance, heat it up front, don't even hammer on it. 
Then start hammering on it right after you heat it. Watch the cups rise a little bit. Keep hammering in those three spots that I showed you until uh, you get a little bit of, of height. And at that point, just fucking start jamming that screwdriver in there and using a pair of vice grips to try to rotate them. Once they start rotating, you've won. Then it's pretty much just a, a matter of getting them out. And so now that uh, arm should pop right off the uh, knuckle. So using 1316s and 7 8 ratchets and wrenches, you basically remove the front pin. Um, that comes out pretty easy. Remove the back pin. The issue we had here was that it basically, because of the header, you can't remove it. So uh, you have to slide it off the front. Kind of made it a pain. The U-bolts didn't want to come loose, so I just cut them off. We've got new ones and all new hardware, so it's not a big deal. Um, and there you go. This one, we can just pull the spring pack out and we'll, uh, we'll lay it down and compare it to our, uh, our new one. So here we go, here's a good comparison. So even though, yeah, this gives four inches of lift, you can see this old one's basically just flat and wasted. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, I believe the plus sign goes to the back. I'm gonna double check the instructions. But other than that, we just slip it back into its factory hole uh, and bolt it up. That's it. One other thing to keep in mind, um, I just use a little bit of heavy grease. You want to grease up these bushings. There's a couple of sets. The larger set goes in the front, the plus sign, and the smaller set go in the rear. And so now I'm ready to just put it back in. Um, this is one thing you don't want to do. I'm, uh, well, I guess not too tight. I have the jack supporting the axle, but this is stretched to kind of its capacity. And this is the reason we're replacing it with... Uh, with kind of a, a, a longer uh, brake line. There's one side complete. Now we just gotta do the other side. There we go, we got both of these in. A few things to keep in mind. First of all, um, you're gonna need to find, this has a pin and that has a seat down in there. See how that's flush? You need to make sure yours are flush Make sure to tighten all the hangers back up. Make sure to tighten these down. Uh, my socket's not quite long enough. I need to get a 24 millimeter um, or uh, whatever that is, like a 13 or 15, 16 wrench. Tighten that down. And the next thing we're doing is we're taking off the sway bar. So I've already disconnected from the spring pads. You need like a 30 millimeter socket or like an inch and a quarter or something. But basically, they unbolt from back here, and now the sway arm, as you can see, I'm sorry, not sway arm, the uh, sway bar is free. One thing to keep in mind, the sway bar is a giant spring, and so you don't want to have the axle jacked up and then release one end, because there can be a lot of energy stored in it. Um, a full droop, as long as you take it off cleanly, it should be alright. Um, these are the two bolts that come out. Uh, I think we need to reuse these washers, but I don't think we reuse the bolts. I think the kit comes... Uh, with new bolts from um, off-road design uh, but I need to get the whole sway bar pulled out for that you need like a 5 8 socket and a 5 8 wrench or something along those lines um, it sucks because they're bolts they're not studs so you got to get on the back side and basically just impact them out um, then once the sway bar drops out we can take a look at our new bushings and stuff so here's our factory sway bar out of the truck um, no real heroics here, just uh, unbolted. You can see these are the factory rubber bushings. They're not completely dead, but they're pretty well wasted. This is our bushing kit from Off-Road Design. You can see there's a little split here. Uh, same way the factory ones went on. And then these bushings here are going to get replaced with these pieces here. Um, we're going to have to hammer these up probably. Just like that, we've rebuilt our sway bar. Um, center these guys a little bit. And the nice thing about this is this is going to work perfectly with our um, quick disconnect kit. So let me take you guys over here. Let's take a look at that kit again. So here's kind of all the important bits is these welded pieces. So these bushings and sleeves go in here, and then these bolts are used to secure this in the spot of the original hangers. 
Um, this bracket is to hold it out of the way. We got to figure out where to mount this in a minute. Basically, this bolts the frame, and this lets you uh, like that, and then this lets you hang your um, sway bar out of the way. And these are your quick disconnect pins. Um, so let's just grease up these uh, these bushings, and we'll get it installed. So here it is installed. Um, you want to make sure you reuse the factory washers, new bolts that come with it. Um, I haven't tightened these down all the way yet because I want to be able to figure out where the sway bar needs to be. Um, this is the relocation bracket. This is the top bump stop. Um, I think it's like a 5 8 inch uh, nut. Basically just take the nut out, put this in there, tighten it back down. That way when you disconnect the sway bar, you just slide it up out of the way, lock it in here, and it's not going to get in the way of the suspension um, when you're unlocked. So next step is the one I am least looking forward to. Uh, we got to get the sway bar back into the truck and it's just those uh, those front bolts that hold the uh, sway bar are just not a lot of fun to mess with. And with that our off-road designs kit is in. Everything's bolted up. You can see the mounts moved a little bit from where they were uh, but that's pretty normal for the kit and of course to install this you have to have at least two inches of lift uh, because it moves the, the sway bar up. So, we're getting really, really close to buttoning up the front end, guys. Um, I'm going to tighten a couple of bolts just to be 100% done with that. Um, and then we're going to move on to the steering stabilizer. So, there is our st steering stabilizer. Um, there's no real rocket science to it, especially if you've got an axle like mine's got a factory provision. Um, that just basically bolts right back in, and she's in. Um, I think that to finish up tonight, we're going to reinstall this, this drop steering arm. And then all that will be left on the front is brake lines and shocks. Okay, so the shocks are in. Here's a little tip for getting this bolt in. I cut up the back of my hand and just kind of yelled and screamed for a while. And then I went and got a magnetic retrieval tool. And then just basically held the bolt underneath because it's pretty long and then forced it through the hole. It went in immediately without any issues. Um, so both sides, the shocks are on. This arm is fully torqued. These are 90 foot pounds. I don't remember what this one is. I think I just torqued it tight and put the cotter pin in it. Um, you can see, this is why we get an extended brake line. So the suspension is a full droop. Uh, the jack is basically just supporting it. You can see how tight this is. So if one side went into a gully and basically forced the other, was forced down by the other side, this would let go. So, the next thing we're going to do is the part I've been dreading the most, and that is replacing these brake lines. So, disaster struck. These brake fittings were just so fucking crusty that they just broke. And I'm just going to let all the brake fluid run out of this bitch. Like, fuck this shit. Um, probably going to have to replace both sets of hard lines. It's not particularly difficult work. The problem is I don't have a flaring tool and I don't have a, uh, I used to have a, a tubing bender, um, but I can't find it. Um, so we're gonna have to buy, and, the, and you can't buy like pre-made hard lines, right? You have to buy a roll of hard line and then route your own. So this is kind of what our front looks like. You can see this is a dramatic amount of lift. Um, we've moved on here to the rear. The rear shock drops out, it's got a bolt in the bottom. Mine already has the stud. Um, it might be because it's a late model. If you have an earlier model truck, you may have to add the stud. The kit comes with two stud kits. Uh, the next thing we gotta do is basically just support this axle and install a lift block in here between this uh, leaf spring and the axle. And so, we can try to remove these, otherwise we can just cut them off like we did the front. Okay, so the whole back end is in here. There's not real gotchas. This block needs to have the thicker side going to the back. Make sure you obviously set the alignment pins. There's going to be a pin going down the hole up here where the spring pack seats. Put on the the U-bolts, uh, tighten them down. Install the shock, tighten it down. Um, you got to free this parking brake cable from its captivity. Cut a slit here and remove it. Um, Full droop. This one really stretches out the factory brake line location. Um, I didn't relocate it with that clip because we um, 
are going to install a stainless steel rear brake line, which will give us some extra length. Um, that's pretty much it for the lift. I'm going to get the wheels back on it, show you guys what it looks like. And then I think I'm going to call it a day. I'm going to have to order some parts for the brakes. It'll be a few days because I'll be out of town. But uh, thanks to the beauty of movie magic, when we come back, I will be showing you replacing the brake lines. Okay, so we got the lift installed. Here's kind of the final result. You can see this is almost six inches of lift. Obviously, it's going to settle. Um, here we got, what, four or five inches. So we definitely got more than four inches at every corner. Obviously, the truck's a little different. Some of the tires, air pressure might be different. Um, but let me guys take you guys back. And looks nice and level. Looks nice and high. Like I said, the front end is definitely going to settle more than the rear. Um, if anything, I mean, look at that approach angle. I can almost hit the hit the tire like 30 inches of ground clearance in the front. And if we look underneath, got lots of space in the middle. Um, drive shaft looks good. In the notes, it says that we have to grind a little bit on the drive shaft for a little extra clearance. I might do that when I do the brakes. Uh, when we come back to this next week. But all in all, the lift is in. I'm pretty happy. Um, not counting the brake lines and, and the extra time that's going to take. It took two, we're probably around six hours to install everything if you weren't doing the brakes. Um, I would highly recommend doing the brakes. The lines are, are stretched pretty thin already. Um, so going with a longer brake line is definitely going to help. Um, but I will check in with you guys once we start getting the brakes back in. Okay, well, the front brakes are bled and our new lines are installed and you can see how much more more space we have um, I just used my one-man bleeder worked great I uh, gotta get these tightened down a little bit more um, but you can see obviously we're, we're sitting on the axle so we're at like ride height right now um, but even at full droop these don't pull all the way tight um, which is good I had to run a new hard line over on this side um, and for you guys up north, I gotta do this on like a yearly basis. I feel for you. So this one's pretty loose too. Um, new crush washers, everything else is good. <sighs> that pretty much buttons up our front suspension. Um, so all we have left is the rear brake line. Um, here I can show you. This is the, the old front brake line. You can see I just twisted off the end of it. Um, the front brake lines are 3 16 if anybody cares. SAE threads, not metric. Um, you can get these for like 8 bucks at Advanced Auto. Basically just flat line with two adapters. Um, then you just bend it up to make it fit. Um, I just bent it with my hands, use a cheap flaring tool. Um, I am not super happy with that, but uh, it's better than spending $200 on a flare tool to do one brake line. Um, so now I got to do the rear um, rear stainless steel brake line and then trim out a little bit on the drive shaft and then we will be finally done. Okay, last thing was installing the longer rear brake line. Let me show you guys that. So this was an adventure as well. Uh, I ended up having to remove this entire line. The, if you guys look up there, see where my flashlight is? That's where the fuel filter is, and there's actually a, uh, um, like a nut there that basically lets you split the line. So I ended up pulling the whole line out, buying a new fitting, and re, uh, re-terminating it, um, and reusing the old line because it was in good shape. The problem is, all of the fittings on this truck that are part of the brake lines were just caked with goo and shit and just seized shut so did that um, blood the rear brakes drum brakes are harder to bleed with that power bleeder so i might wait until i get a, a buddy here that can they can run the run the brakes for me bleed them out one more time but brake pedal feels good so hopefully it's not a big deal so that concludes the installation of the lift kit and the lift kit accessories um, i checked the front pinion i don't have any rubbing um, on the front drive shaft, it says that if you do, there's a way to clearance the uh, the double carton joint. I don't think I need to do that. Um, if it starts rubbing on the trail or something, I'll come back and clearance it later because it requires removing the front drive shaft, which is a bit of a pain. Um, 
But with that, I'm really happy with it. I can't wait to take it on the trail. You guys will see that. The last thing I did was I torqued down all of the lug nuts. It's very important. Make sure you torque down all your lug nuts. Um, all in all, I think the kit was pretty good. I probably spent close to eight hours with the brake fiasco, cutting and remaking new lines. Um, if yours come apart, it's really quick to replace them and bleed them. It's not too big of a deal. Uh, I'm super happy with it. I've got some good stuff lined up for us to do next on the Blazer. So if you like the video, hit the like button. If you like the channel, please subscribe. There's going to be more content. Check out the Blazer playlist. If you need links uh, or want to see how much I paid for any of the parts that we've used, uh, check out the Google Doc in the description below. Uh, all the parts, all the stuff is cataloged in there. There's links. Uh, you guys can find whatever you need down there. Love you guys. Thanks for watching. Peace.